Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful day that you have given us to spend time with you. This new blessing, this new opportunity to gather in your name and to study more about your word. Lord, your word says you loved us first and because you loved us first, we love you. Lord, you loved us from the very beginning. That's why you created us and you loved us so much. You gave us the freedom of choice, Lord. Thank you for blessing us with this opportunity, this privilege, where we can gather in your name and study the word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, your anointing is filling us. Your power is filling us. This power is your love is filling us. And we can study your word like never before. The revelation is pouring out, filling our hearts. And whatever we learn, Lord is going, sinking deep into our heart. Thank you, Lord, for this blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. So let's go to Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Let's go to one minute. Yeah, Romans. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Okay. Hallelujah. 16. Yeah. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, Paul is saying here, the gospel of Christ is the power of God. Now, the gospel which I preach is not my gospel, but it is the gospel of Christ, the power of God, and to salvation to everyone that believe it. And because it is the power of God, I am not ashamed. Now, many a times we preach the gospel and many times, maybe now we have the confidence because of we have the Holy Spirit. But before, we would be ashamed. What if I don't, you know, what if I, uh, you know, I pray, but that person does not get healed? What if I lay my hand, but that person does not recover? Has it ever happened? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. The thoughts start bombarding our minds and we start thinking what if the you know what if i can't see the healing or what if i can't see the manifestation but here paul is saying i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god so in other words he's saying i know and i know and i know this gospel is the power of god and because it is the power of god it will surely bring healing surely bring deliverance i don't have to doubt whether i will see or no and if i don't see what will others think about me but because i have the sure evidence of the word of god praise god Okay, because I have the sure evidence of the word of God, the sure assurance of what the word of God is saying, when I have the, uh, you know how to say, when I have the full confidence in the word of God, now that gives me the assurance. And because that gives me the assurance, that gives me the confidence. Now I'm not worried because I know I am no longer ashamed whether I will see the results or no, because the word of God is the power of God. The gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. That's what he's saying. For I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. Can you put that, you know? Okay. 
For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is power of God unto salvation. So what is salvation? Okay. Salvation, many times we say it is the whole package. Everything in included. But also salvation is everlasting life. Because everlasting life is knowing God. Now when I have this everlasting life, when I start to know God, when I start to build my relationship, my personal intimate relationship with God, now everything else will be added unto me. And salvation is the whole package. So salvation is everlasting life. Where I start to know God more, and more and more and because i start to know god more everything else is added salvation is the whole package yes yes okay it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believeth so what he's saying is the gospel of christ is the power of god unto salvation but for us to receive this you know, this power of God to receive this salvation and to salvation, there is one condition I have to obey. Anybody knows what is the condition? Okay, the condition is everyone that believes. If I don't believe, I can never see the plan of God flowing. I can never see salvation, the power of God flowing into my life. Paul is saying, yes, the gospel is so the gospel of Christ is the power of God and to salvation. But everybody cannot see this power of God manifesting in their life. Only those who believe, accept Jesus as their Lord, God, and Savior, only those are the people who can see the power of God manifesting. Yes. Yes, if I'm studying the word of God, but I don't believe I'm going to church, I'm praying. But if I don't believe, then now I cannot see the power of God releasing salvation into my life. Unless I believe, because believing is what? Action corresponding to message. Now, when I believe in the gospel of Christ, which is the power of God, and my actions correspond to this message, which is heard, now, that's called believing. Okay, can you put Romans chapter 10, verse 11? Enoch, you can read the scripture. For the scripture say it. Whosoever believeth on the Lord Jesus, on him shall be not a sin. Yes. For the, thank you. Okay. For the scripture says, whosoever means anybody, no condition, only this person, only that person. But anybody who believes on him shall not be ashamed. In other words, he's saying anybody who believes in him will see miracles happening. He does not have to be ashamed. It's not only that the preacher can do the miracles, not only that the priest can do the miracles, not only this anointed people can do miracles. It's each one of us, whosoever, when I believe, no, I am not ashamed when I do these miracles, whether they will happen or not, but now I am no longer ashamed because I believe. When I believe means I'm saying, I've heard, I've seen, I've seen the miracles happening by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why even today, I am dependent on my God. These miracles should be happening. They have to be happening. That's called believing on him. When I'm believing on him, now I'm not in the doubt whether it will happen or it will not happen, whether it will happen or not happen. Is the doubt any longer there? No. No. Believing, belief is superseding that spirit of doubt now i don't no longer have that doubt and i'm no longer ashamed that's what paul is saying i am no longer ashamed because the gospel of christ is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believeth because the kingdom of god works on a principle of believing it 
and receiving it. See this. Chris Scott. Be, yeah, see this. God of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. Now, when we come on Saturdays, okay, to the healing sessions, we can see healings happening. Yes, maybe the first time, even this happens. Yes. The first time you might be thinking whether the person get healed or no. Yeah. Right or wrong? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, even I had the doubt, all of us have, including me, I also had the doubt whether the healing will happen or no. But now do, you, now do you have the doubt on Saturday? Will the healing happen or no? No. No, all of us are doing these miracles. All of us are seeing these healings. But are we thinking, is this really real or no? Is that ever happening? No. No. Why? Because this gospel of Christ, which is preached, okay, is the power of God. And because it is the power of God, and to salvation to everyone that believe it. So it could be anybody from any condition you are come from. Maybe you are not good in studies. You don't have education anywhere you can be. Okay. But we can still see healings happening. And we can see the power of God manifesting. When you see Peter, when he was doing healings and miracles, was he not just an ordinary fisherman? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. he was an ordinary uneducated just fishing for fish. Yes. But God raised him up from the lowest bit to the highest bit. Wasn't Paul just like a murderer, a sin, a sinner? Yes. He was in the church, even though he was praying, wasn't he a sinner? Yes. But yes. didn't he see the power of God manifesting? 100% he saw the power of God. That's why he's only saying here, I am not came for the power of God because this gospel of Christ is the power of God in my life. That's the same prayer which we have to make, Lord. I'm not ashamed because this gospel of Christ is the power of God that is working actively into my life. Always remember the word of God is quick, active, alive. It's powerful. The word of God is not passive. What is power? Power is a force that um, changes things. Power is a force that brings result, that brings change. It replaces all things with new. Yes, absolute correct. Power is a force. Just like how Owen also was saying, you know, you also said the same thing. Power is a force that brings result. It brings change. It replaces from the old to new. So here he's saying power of God. It is the power of God. That means the word of God is a force that is working each moment. Every single moment is not inactive. Every moment it is active. It is waiting. Okay, when you speak the word now, the word of God is already manifested. That's why it is so quick, so powerful. It will bring the result. I might see the result instantly manifesting in the physical world, but it is all done in the spiritual world. That's why Paul is saying this gospel of Christ is the power of God. Let me ask you another question. What do you mean by the word gospel? So good to be true. Yes. Gospel means too good to be true. That means the gospel is so amazing. It is so quick, so amazing. That is why it challenges me to believe. Because this word is so active, there is nothing that can be more powerful than this word. No matter what new weapons technology that this world is building and the world has, no matter what uh, weapons and nothing of that can be full of action. Nothing of the technology and machines that are created even today can be active. It is only and only and only the word of God, the gospel of Christ, which is active. 
there is nothing else nothing else that can be as active as the word of god that's why even today after 2000 years it was written 2000 years or more than 2000 years ago even today the same word can bring results right yes yes why because it is the power of god and to salvation means if you want to can write this down the gospel of christ is the gospel of grace the gospel of christ is the gospel of grace thank you jesus praise you jesus now power of god means it is the grace of god the power of god means it is the grace of god and this grace is the gospel of christ leading us unto salvation it means in other words grace is the power of god unto salvation okay and always remember this grace of god releases the power of god into my life which flows in my life in abundance now the responsibility is up to me how much am i allowing it to flow into my life because god wants this grace to flow in abundance into my life am i allowing it to flow into my life how how can i allow it to flow in my life you know what do you think how can i allow this grace of by, god grace of god to flow by, by following god's word okay anybody else jihaya nitin tell me what do you think what was the question um now this grace of god releases the power of god into my life to flow into my life now if it releases the grace of god the power of god to flow into my life okay is it forgiveness what is it forgiveness forgiveness okay so then how can we allow it to flow into our life that's the question how through the word of god but it through the word of god okay okay i i give the answer okay you yep. correct correct yeah but the answer is you have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth only when you believe in your heart the lord jesus and confess with your mouth that god raised him from the dead you shall be saved means the power grace of god releases the power of god to flow into our life now to do allow it to receive it you have to believe in your heart okay and confess with your mouth do you understand Hallelujah. Praise God. Salute Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. So I have to be very very careful. Praise God. I have to be very very careful, very vigilant. Okay, what what am I speaking? Am I confessing that Jesus was raised up from the dead? Am I speaking the word of God or am I speaking the word the contradiction to the word of God? I have to be very very vigilant, very very careful. what words am i speaking no always remember the righteousness of god is the grace of god because why i say this is did i do anything to earn this righteousness from him did i do anything no this righteousness was given to me freely but because of what jesus has done it is given to me right yes yes and that's why i'm saying it is the grace of god because i did not do anything to deserve it i did not do anything to uh, earn it or to receive it okay so, you know it's not like a reward a reward is given only when you do something it's not that i did something and it's given like a reward yes. but it's given yes. to me really is it a gift but is it a gift yes 
grace of God is the gift. The righteousness of God is the gift. Give it to us freely. In the Old Testament, the people had to do certain rituals to receive the Holy Spirit and they were in the law. But now, why we receive it freely? Do you know why? Why we receive it freely? Because Jesus has already accomplished it. Now we don't have to accomplish it. Either one of us. In the Old Testament, the people had to accomplish. In the covenant, Jesus has accomplished. We, we don't have to accomplish it anymore. Now we just have to believe it. That's why the scripture says the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. Now we just have to believe it and receive it. Receive it how? Through faith. Because the kingdom of God works on a principle of believing it and receiving it. I don't have to do anything Believe it. Only believe it. Now you might be thinking, I don't have to do anything. Then why does the scripture say that this, the believing means action corresponding to message? That means I have to act, right? I have to do something. This action is not that kind of action where I have to do to qualify. Okay. These actions, these works of faith, these are not works of law. These are works of faith where I believe in Jesus and I believe in what he has done and that's why my actions correspond to what he has done. Otherwise, the works of law is what I have to do to qualify myself. You know what is faith? What is faith? Praise God. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith. Faith is a gift. Now, 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 now. Faith is a gift from God when I speak scriptures and renew my mind. Faith is a spirit which releases the power. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Mr. Word. Now faith is the substance of things yeah, hoped for, yeah, the yeah, Now faith. Okay, because... Uh, you know why I always say that, Mr. Word? Because if you're saying now, if you don't say now, that means it's not in finished. It's, the scripture is incomplete. Even I did that many times. I said without now, faith is the substance of things so far. But then I came to understand if I'm saying that means it's not incomplete. It's incomplete. Yes. Yes. Even I was in the same, uh, you know, pit, thinking that faith is the substance. Okay. All your answers are correct. Yes, the scripture says now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But I'll give you another definition of faith. Okay. Faith is my response to the finished works of Jesus on the cross. Faith is my response. Faith is my response. To the finished works of Jesus on the cross. Faith is my response to the finished works of Jesus on the cross. When I respond, I don't respond with doubt, but I respond with faith that everything is already done on the cross by Jesus. And because I already done by the, you know, finished on the cross by Jesus, I only have to respond to it. How? Believe it. The action corresponding to the message heard. Hear it? Believe it. My actions correspond. That's all. That's faith. Faith is my response to the finished works of Jesus on the cross. I don't have to work hard. I don't have to labor. I don't have to put my full effort and work hard day and night, day and night. Just my actions have to correspond means live a life of faith. When I say actions correspond does not mean again to work hard means believe it and receive it. When your actions correspond now, you are experiencing the blessings of God flowing into your life. And now when the blessings of God are flowing into your life, you are living a life of abundance. Thank you, Jesus. 
this is the blessing that you know we were seeing in Romans 1 16 what Paul is saying I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ can you put that in a okay for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God and to salvation to everyone that believeth, not someone to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Means the Jew have received it, the Jews have received it, the Greek have received it. Praise God. You know who are the Jews? Yeah, it says to the Jews first. Um, Paul is a Jew, and the Romans are Jews, where they are. Uh, um, where they are, you know, they they are more into the gospel, but they are in the law. They are they are like the people of God because they come from Jerusalem, but they are not. Um, a, they don't have the gospel of Christ because the gospel of Christ only came, and only was preached after the you know after Jesus went to heaven, the ascension of Jesus. Otherwise, yeah, please, you know. Before, they did not believe that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. Yeah, they did not believe. They had their own laws, their own customs. And that's why the Pharisees, even Paul, that's why I said Paul was a Roman, because uh, sorry, a Jew, because Paul was part of the Pharisees. He was a Pharisee in the church. And the Pharisees have their own custom traditions, and um, they do things like how they desire, like um, out of the law. According to the law. Yeah. Yes, you know. I said according to the law. Yeah, of Moses. To the law of Moses, the Mosaic law. But now Paul is saying, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. This is a gospel of the law or the gospel of Christ. 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 Now he's saying, I am not no longer in I have to do to receive. But now I am in the complete, I am no longer ashamed that I have to do and receive it. But now I'm operating in the gospel of Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation. I believe in it. I'm no longer ashamed. And that's why I am working in the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. And that's why he's saying it to the Jew first. Means he did not care whether the people were ready to accept him or not. He just went preaching to the Jews, to the Greeks. The Greeks were the one who did not believe in them. You know, Greek, the one who believed in their own religion, in their own customs. But he's saying both are rejecting the gospel of Christ. The Jews are after the law. The Greeks are after their religion. Nobody is ready to accept the grace of God. So what should I do? Should I stop preaching? No. No, he continued preaching to the Jews and to, to those who believe in the law and who believed in the Old Testament, those who had different religions. He never stopped. He went and preached the gospel of Christ. He was not ashamed because he knew this is the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and to salvation to everyone that believeth. That's why he went. He had so much boldness to go and preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Are you understanding? Enoch, you can take the scripture down. Thank you. Praise God. Yeah. Did you understand? Yes. Yes. Praise God. Any doubt? No. Okay. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so we close today's session. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Okay, we can close with the prayer. Does anybody want to do the ending prayer? Praise God. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us this wonderful truth for helping us to understand the secrets, mysteries of the kingdom. Lord, 
you help us to build a strong firm relationship with you based on the word the foundation of our relationship should be on the word lord lord we want to know you more you teach us you continue to teach us how much you love us and how, because you loved us so much you gave us the gospel of christ which is the same power that is active in you active with you the one you have right now this power which is in you you gave it to us as well the gospel of christ which is the power of god unto salvation lord help us to believe and not to be ashamed not to doubt but let this belief be the spirit of doubt thank you lord thank you jesus thank you holy spirit lord as we are going to school you have protected us blessed us anointed us your blood is cleansing each one of us and lord the life of jesus the love of jesus is flowing into our lives and i bind every spirit of distraction that is distracting us from studying your word when people come and speak to us about any other things of this world about games about the songs and the movie or anything else lord it could be i bind it i rebuke it i cast it out into the depth of the sea in the name of jesus i lose that we are all anointed protected blessed the angels are all around us and what we speak the holy spirit you're bringing it into manifestation thank you holy spirit for giving us the revelation and understanding in jesus name we pray for the amen 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 praise god yes thank you jesus so we can pray in tongues who kara bara bakara bakara makara makara mana nana nana Hari 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 Hari